on some more stuff. Good. Yeah, we're back up in the attic, and I'm glad I did, because I almost missed this. Oh, what is it? The Plow and the Stars by Sean O'Casey. It's the first edition. It was my grandfather's. Oh, I, I bet that's worth something. Yeah, Grandpa sure loved it. He said it was about courage and loyalty and fighting for what you believe in and even dying for it. That's the way I feel about this place. Did you get everything? Yeah, I think so. I'm just taking some things that, that can't be replaced. I'll put them in a box and save it till I get this place back. You know, the foreman said that you could take as long as you wanted to move everything. I'm surprised he let me in here at all. He's just doing his job, Hart. What kind of man digs up graves? So, uh, can I help you with anything? No. No, you've done enough. Get me in here was, was plenty. Oh, uh, that was the least I could do. I still can't figure out how you got me in here. I mean, Ross Mueller said it was practically impossible. <laughs> hey, didn't I tell you? My name carries a lot of weight in this here town. I know, but it still seemed impossible. Well, I really want to know, how did you do it? My beautiful girl. I can't believe it. I said I was sorry. Sorry? Sorry can't replace the 1957 Buick grill, that's for sure. I will get a hammer and we will bang out the bomb. Oh, no, you don't. You guys aren't touching this. You've done enough damage already. Why do you make such a big deal out of a piece of metal? A, pi a piece of metal? This is solid chrome. Uh, they don't make papers like this anymore. Uh, They're out of plastic now. Look at it. It doesn't even have a speck of rust on it. You know, I got down on my hands and knees and polished this until I could see Frank, myself. Don't what? Don't worry about it, okay? My insurance will cover all the damage. Why should you pay for this? She did it. No, it's my fault. I should have been behind the driver's seat. Oh, oh. see? Everything okay? Oh, Everything is an okay. Oh, Frank, Frank, it's okay. Frank, you should not Frank, pay for this. We gotta talk. Come on. Alan Michael knows about Harley's problem. What? He's gonna help us out. Yeah, listen, I'm gonna take care of all of the arrangements. You guys just make sure that you get her there on time. Don't worry, we will. Okay, and please be careful. Wait, what is he talking about? See you later. You know your sister's in danger. What happened? Nothing. And nothing will as long as she stays low. And the best thing we have is to get her out of town. This way we'll be absolutely sure she's safe. <sighs> matter how I got permission. I did. I just want to know that's all. All right. I threatened the president of the construction company with the losses. Is he the one responsible for taking his farm away? I don't know. Uh, but if he wasn't, I imagine he got word through to the people he works for. Well, this is the second time it's come through for me. First for stopping those men from digging up the cemetery. I'm really grateful for that. Please, don't be. I'm your father. You know, my mom's letter, she said, she said that you were a hero. She's right. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. So, have you got everything? Well, there's another box in the attic, and I'm sure I should just look around here a little bit. Okay. Oh. You can still smell Grandpa's pipe tobacco. Grandma, she used to try to get him to smoke outside. <laughs> but you always sneak in and watch her cook. She was a great cook. Made the best huckleberry pie in the world. You can almost smell that, too. You must have cared for them a lot. I love them. And I hate the fact that people have been in here touching their things. It's not right. I understand. I am sorry, Hart. I wish things could have turned out differently. Well, it's not over yet. 
Well, um, look, we should wrap this up, huh? Yeah, there's one more box on the stairs. Let me let me get it. Okay, good. I should call Blake. Do you know if that phone is on? Uh, I don't know. Give it a try. All right. Yes, this is Mr. Thorpe. Has my daughter come in yet? No? No, no, that's all right. Uh, I'll be in shortly. Hey, did you reach Blake? Uh, no. Tell you the truth. I'm worried about her. What? She's very sensitive lately. <laughs> I showed up. No. It's not just that. Listen, she'll get used to having a brother in time. Yeah, I've tried to talk to her, but she's... I know. I know. Just give her time. So is this the last of it? Yeah, I think so. This all must mean a lot to you, these things. Yeah, they do. I got some things I think you'd like to see also. $147 for lingerie? Clothes? Records? Tapes? How can one girl spend so much money in one day? Maybe she has a special talent for it. Honey, you never should have given her your credit card. I just thought she was going to get a couple of things. That's like sending Imelda Marcos out and saying, you know, buy one pair of shoes. I mean, look at this. There are hundreds and hundreds of dollars of receipts here. I really didn't expect her to do this. Well, of course she's going to do this. She thinks we're rich, right? She's going to milk us for everything she can get. I still think she's a good girl underneath. Oh. Look, underneath what? I mean, what is this thing? Look at this. Is this a bathing suit She's or a... just or... trying to get attention. You know, with Sean and Barbara and the new baby, they weren't able to give her the attention she needs. Maybe that's what she needs from us. We, More time. We cannot let this girl turn our lives upside down. I know. Now, we are trying to have a baby here. We don't need this extra attention. I'm telling you, I'm going to send her home. No! Honey, look, please. No, we... no, we are not going to send Bridget home. I will take care of her. Striper uniform? Yeah. Stupid name, isn't it? But the job is so rewarding. You know, I never would have pictured you doing volunteer work. Me? Oh, of course. I mean, I, I, I enjoy it so much. I can't even tell you. I mean, getting to read stories to old people and getting to make the little sick kids laugh, it really fills my heart with joy. I'm impressed. Well, I am a giver. Yeah. Don't worry, Eleni. Frankie will forget this whole thing. You will see. Oh, no, no. The big Frank never forgets anything about his stupid old car. Excuse me. I... You okay now? I'm better ever since you stick up for me against the Frank. Well, don't let him bother you. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just as long as Harley is safe. She is, as long as Davis doesn't spot her. So why don't we go after this creep and book him? It's too soon. The guy drugged my sister. We can't go on fire yet. We gotta wait until the plan is all worked out. So what's the holdup? We gotta find out the weak link here, right? Even if it is Davis, we gotta go around this safely. Why? Fletch got some more information on the guy. It seems he's got a hair trigger reputation and anything could set him off. Oh, man. I can't believe my sister is mixed up in all this. I mean, no offense, Frank, but your sister's got a head like a mule. Yeah, well, tell me something I don't know. Helen Michael and I tried reasoning with her about staying out of sight, but she kept going on about how she could take care of herself. Like she's going to do something against the next agency guy like Davis. We had to lock her up. No, I can't afford any trouble right now. I got my own agenda. Well, are you leaving after all this? As soon as I wrap up this case and get my fee. All right, it's time for another unofficial call to Levy. About what? 
want him to keep an eye on Davis. You really think he's gonna hurt my sister? He doesn't know what she knows. That's gotta make him nervous. She's still upstairs? Yeah, we didn't have to lock her in her old bedroom. Her bedroom? Oh, no! Of course, darling. Coffee? Uh, that will be all, Vera. Thank you. <laughs> what is it? I uh, need to borrow the yacht. For what? Well, I have to get Harley out of town. She's in danger. What sort of danger? Uh, first, I think you should know that Harley was the one who gave out the password to the Foundation computer. And you're going to take her away on my yacht? Yeah, listen to me. She was forced into it. What do you mean, forced? She was drugged with some truth serum by John Davis. Roger's lawyer? Yes, and ex-agency buddy, lest we forget. Every time I think about what that man did to her, oh, I just can't. Poor girl. Well, listen, I need to get her out of town before something happens to her. As much as I hate Roger, I can't believe he'd harm her. Oh, no, 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 this is Davis. See, now Harley is sure that he is the one who drugged her in order to get the password out of her. So she's decided to break into his office to get the proof. What a brave thing for her to do. Oh, yes, very brave, but also very stupid. See, now Davis is possibly on to her. Who knows what he'll do if he finds her? Okay, you do whatever you have to do. I'll call the captain and tell him to follow your orders. Thank you. Alice. Yes, Thank you you're welcome, much. of course. <laughs> Guess who's here? I'm not in the mood for games, Vera. Uh, not even to play footsie? Oh, oh bless you. <laughs> oh. Never been so glad to see anyone in my life. Yeah, gee, this jet lag must look good on me. <laughs> Did you just get in from Switzerland? Yeah, straight from the airport. What's going on? Well, my aunt will fill you in. I, I've got to get going in, Alex. Thanks again. Okay. Anytime. And Fletcher, thank yeah. you very much for doing all this hard work for the company. Sure, glad to. Anytime. You know, that guy is turning into a real spalding after all. I mean, this take charge, can do, gotta go attitude that must run in a family gene pool, huh? I'm very proud of them. Yeah. So, tell me everything you've been up to. No, you tell me everything you've been up to. Well... <sighs> It seems old Raj has been putting together a major land deal right here under our noses. Uh, uh, with the money that he's been taking from Spalding Foundation to finance it. Mm -hmm. First funneling it through Europe into those ten phony charities. Through that Swiss bank that I have been investigating. Well, Michael told you I did some good work, and here it is. Those ten charities have ten dummy storefronts rented out to some guy named Hans Dorfman. <laughs> Here's the best part. Springfield Post Office Box. Oh, that's it. You think this Hans Dorfman is Roger? No, I'd bet that Hans Dorfman is John Davis. Roger doesn't want to get his fingerprints on anything. But we are definitely moving in for the kill. I can almost smell the blood. You're enjoying this. Oh, you bet I am. The day I kick Roger Thorpe out of this house and out of my life is the day I get my pride and self-respect back. You've never lost either one of those things as far as I'm concerned. I swear. I will never allow any man to get to me like that ever again. No one. Push down on the gas with your right foot and ease up off the clutch with your left. I can't do it. Yes, you can. I'll give you another driving lesson. In the big break, Scott. <laughs> we'll ask him. No, you. Boy, I'm hungry. You sure would like something to eat? You have a wager for it, Yes. <laughs> you want something? Mm -hmm. I'd love a turkey sandwich and a cup of coffee. Okay, I go do it now. Hey, I'll come with you in case Frank starts razzing you. Oh, my hero. Hmm? You laugh, sister. You have not seen the last of Richard Freeman. Yeah, why do you keep a tab on this John Davis guy? You need? Unofficial rank. 
Listen, I promise to bring you on the bus when it goes down, all right? Score some big points with the brass. Mallet, call me back later, all right? Check in, thanks. Harley's gone. What do you mean she's gone? I had her locked in. You don't know my sister. She's been breaking out of that room since she was eight years old. Come on, we gotta get her before Davis all does. Right. Tough, you into steal cars now, especially a piece of junk like mine. Oh, is this your car? Yeah. You know, I heard a car alarm go off. I, I thought it came from here. Oh, that couldn't be. I don't have an alarm. Well, you know how it is. Sound plays tricks on you. It's not the only thing. I appreciate the concern. Listen, uh, I'm glad we ran into you anyway. I remember battles at the poker game saying what a hot shot lawyer you are, and my friend Frank here is looking for a liar, lawyer, isn't that right, Frank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? What for? Well, for the diner. I'm, uh, my lease is coming up for renewal, so I need a hot shot lawyer to, to look over things. That'd be great. Uh, I don't handle it. Uh... Well, you know what? I suppose I could take a look at it now. Really? In the diner. Oh, that'd be great. Thanks. I'll take care of that other case, Frank. Yeah, let me, let me know how that other case goes. With this one. Boy, am I glad to see you. Why? Well, first chance I get, I'm going to strangle you. Why? How was I supposed to know Davis was going to be here? Just shut up and lay low, all right? Where are we going? For a ride. This will pick you up after that long plane ride. So would answering my question. Roger could never affect our friendship. Well, it seems to me like he already has. You can't blame me if I'm wary after what he's done to me. Oh, so you're gonna blame every other man in your life for the fact that Roger Thorpe has done you wrong. Oh, that makes sense to me. I'm just going to be more cautious. Yeah. That's all. Good, good. You never can tell when Henry, me, Alton, and Michael, we might turn around and stab you in the back. Oh, well, don't forget Ben. Little nine-year-olds, they can be swift and crafty. Now you're being ridiculous. We're men, aren't we? You're different. You bet we are. And every last one of us cares for you deeply. None more than me, and you're scaring the hell out of me here. Why? Because I do not want you to turn into one of Roger Thorpe's walking wounded. If he lets you give up the part of you that is loving and loyal and good and vital, he will have stolen a hell of a lot more than the Spalding millions. He will have taken away the best part of you that every last man of us loves best about you. You have nothing to worry about. I hope not. I promise. Once Roger's out of my life for good, you'll find the same person right here where I always was. You better be. Because we've got a lot of lost time to make up for. I have to take care of Roger first. I'll be waiting. Here's a picture of Mom when she was 16 on Curry. That, that's her favorite horse. Grandpa said she was a terrific rider. Oh, she was. Was she ever. Did you ever see her run? <laughs> yes, many times. When we were on assignment together in the desert. What was that like? Hot, sandy, 
Dangerous? Sometimes. Was she scared? Sometimes we both were. What was she like? I told you, remember? First time we talked? I know. But now that Grandpa's gone, you're the only person I have left who knew her, and I... It must have been very rough for you to grow up without your parents, especially your mother. Well, it was all I knew. She died when I was a baby. Well, as I told you, she was some kind of beautiful. I don't know. I get, I, I, I can get that from pictures, but I need to know something else about her. Was she fun? <laughs> yeah, she was fun. She was full of the devil. I mean, she loved practical jokes, loved playing them, especially on me. Really? Yeah. And she set me up so well, I fell for him every time. And I hear this throaty laugh, and I say, ah, she got me again, you know? And she had the warmest smile. You remind me so much of her when you smile. I do? Oh, yeah. You take after her a lot. Tell me about when you were, you were secret agents together. What'd you do? Oh, that would take days. But she was the best. In what way? Just had the tools, you know. She was sheer brilliance with language, dialects, disguises. But more than that, she had an instinct. You know, I mean, about situations and people. She knew just intuitively who you could trust and who you had to look out for. I guess you need that for undercover work. Yeah, you do. But the thing you need most is courage, and she had that in spades. Absolute courage. And I, grace under pressure. I didn't inherit that from her. What are you talking about? Grace under pressure. I don't think I had that the other night at the graveyard. Listen, it took a lot of guts to do what you did. Maybe. Grandpa said she loved this place. And I like to think that she'd come back and she'd fight for it, too. Hunt. I know that you think that losing this place is the end of the world. It isn't. It is for me. Look, I appreciate your ties to this place. You grew up here. You have wonderful memories here, but you're too young to live on memories. It's a hermit's existence out here. Don't just shut yourself off from the rest I of the world. I love this existence. It's all you know. There's a big world out there waiting for you to devour it. And I have the means to show it to you. I appreciate that, Listen, but it's you not are a bright I... kid. You are wasted in a place like this. Don't you appreciate and understand the opportunities you have as my son? You can have anything. You can do anything you want. I know what I want. I want this farm. if you could accept what happened and move on. No! Why, why do you want me to do this? Why do you want me to let go of my fawn? I'm thinking of your best interest, Hart. But you know what this place means? Yes, you have made that very clear. Well, then why do you want me to give it Because! Up? I don't think it's healthy for a young man like you to be so stuck in the past. Everything I love is here. But they're just things, They're not just things. It's not just a book or a chair or, or, or some pictures. These walls are filled with my family's heritage. My mother's spirit is here, and so is my grandfather's and the father before okay, me. Okay, okay. From what you have told me of your family, your relatives, they were the sort of people who went out after what they wanted. Yes, yes, and I am exactly like And them. so was your mother. She went out into the world looking for adventure, for experience. She embraced life. She would have come back if she... I'm not so sure. Listen. When I knew her, Laura had this endless curiosity. She was always talking about the places that she wanted to see and, and, and the different cultures and people that she wanted to learn about. And I believe so strongly that she wanted you to experience well, that, I wish too. she was here to tell me. See, I, I honestly believe that's why I'm here for you. 
Look, I understand what this place means to you. I was with you at the cemetery. Do you remember that? I would have killed him. I'm ashamed to admit it, but it's true. Listen, we all have moments of desperation where we want something so badly we are willing to do anything to get it. Anything. But sometimes you lose. I know because, believe me, I have lost. You have? How can you stand it? You learn to adapt. That's the key. You don't hold on to what's gone. This form isn't gone. I'm going to continue to fight But there is so much more. I don't want anything That's else. what you say now. Don't you understand? I love this place. Haven't you ever, haven't you ever loved something so much that, that you would fight? You, you would cheat or steal or even die before you let someone take it away? Besides my daughter, no, I don't think I have. Until now. I never should have let him see me in this stupid looking outfit. Okay. Okay, just find something that's gonna knock his socks off. Looking for something? Aunt Marine, I can explain. My credit card. You know, I, I've been meaning to get this back to you. I just yeah, didn't I know. You were just chance. too busy using it. Well, you said I could buy a few things. I didn't mean you should buy out the entire shopping mall. My suitcase got lost, and you said I could buy some of the things that I need. I didn't mean things like this. Sorry, I didn't realize there was one particular kind of item I should stick to. Don't get sarcastic with me, Bridget. Well, how was I supposed to know? You are a smart girl, Bridget. You knew you were taking advantage. Okay, this is excessive. I'm sorry, but there are some of these things that I need. Oh, really? What about, uh, this cocktail dress? I don't even think this is your size. It's not. Why did you buy it, then? It's not for me. Oh, now that's really great. Not only do you use my credit card and spend a fortune on yourself, but you buy things for people I don't even know. You know her. I bought it from my mother. Well, I talked to the captain of the yacht. All the arrangements are taken care of. Good. Ellen Michael, your aunt told me what Davis did to Harley. Yeah, I could kill him. Stay cool. All I have to do is sit here and wait for Mallet to drop Harley off. Oh, there's one more thing. Blake. Now, what has she done? Nothing yet, but I am sure that she knows that we're up to something and it's concerning Roger. She hasn't told Roger anything yet, has she? No, luckily she's mad at him. Stuff about heart. Oh, if I know her, she won't stay mad at Daddy Dearest for long. She'll tell him. Yeah, that's why we've got to move quickly. <clears throat> Mr. Mallet's here. He doesn't have Sorry, an appointment. Sorry, I got no time for formality. Oh, it's all right, Vera. Hey, you're back. Yeah. Most of you. Today, yeah. <laughs> a little Swiss miss. Hey, man, thanks. You did some great work for us in Switzerland. Yeah, I know. Thanks a lot. I uh, understand that my people got you the passports you needed. Yeah, this was Rogers in jail. My friend and I are gone. The yacht's ready. Good, I got Harley in the car. In the car? She's not going to stay put out there. Don't worry, I got her thinking that we're going so close to talk about getting Davis. Boy, mm -hmm. she in for a surprise. Well, that's her own fault. She shouldn't have tried to do this all on her own. Yeah, we got her out of there just in time. I caught Davis casing the diner. The guy's obviously getting desperate. Well, then that's good. He can be our weak link to Roger. I'm sure of it. All right, I better get going. Well, good luck. Listen, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes when uh, Harley finds out what we're doing with her. hasn't been in years. And I can't remember the last time my mom bought a dress for herself. Did you buy this for your baby sister? It was so cute. I just couldn't pass it up. <laughs> Look, I thought it would be okay. I didn't think I was taking advantage. I mean, you're my father's sister. You know? Your family. Bridget. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think it was so bad. You're rich. You keep saying that. Well, okay. You have two cars in your garage. You have a pool. You have more food 
in one night on your table than my family sees an entire week. Yes. To me, that's rich. We are fortunate, but we work for what we have. Return some books. Bridget, you don't have to do that. Oh, come on. Sure she does. Edward. Sure she does. You can't let her take advantage of you like this. I mean, Bridget, I really don't understand what's going on here. I don't understand how you could be so greedy or so thoughtless. Sweetheart, look. Bridget bought this for her younger sister. What? For the baby. And there's a fishing reel over there for Sean, and the cocktail dress is for Barbara. I just wanted them to have something nice just for once. Oh, well, the fact remains that you still bought all this stuff with our money. I am sorry. I'm going to take everything back, okay? Well, no, wait, you don't have to do that. What, just... I'm glad. Look, you can pay us back with the money that we're giving you for your allowance. That's a great idea. Well, that's it. So, uh, what do you think of my place? Very interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, gonna knock down this wall probably, and uh, hopefully, you know, maybe move some more tables in there. And uh, but I, I can't do that if you know if the landlord raises my rent. So, well, uh, call me in a couple of days, and uh, we'll talk about the lease. Uh, wait, uh, I really have to be going. Well, um, listen, I've uh, I've got some background information here, my files. Here, they're right here. I look he's over back in my office. Well, he, uh, he can't do this. He has, it's my only copy, so he has to stay here. But um, if you want, why don't you just have a seat here, and I'll get Uncle Starburst to cook you up one of his uh, favorite cheeseburgers. <laughs> we really should laugh. <laughs> That's a nice car. <laughs> the expression on Frank's face when you saw what you did to it. <laughs> he looked like he blew a basket. <laughs> a gasket. A gasket? With gasket. Gasket about the only thing on his car you didn't put a dent in. Oh, okay. Well, Frankie always find reason to be mad at me. Oh, I forgot to uh, put order in for that girl. Well, I thought she went to use the phone. She'll, she probably left. Great. I lose customer. Another reason for the big Frank to be mad Don't at me. Don't worry about it. I got to get back to work. Hey, you want to go swimming later? I love to go swimming, but uh, I got to get, get off early. I don't know. That's Frank. Okay. I need to get off early tonight. Sure, fine. What, you too busy to get angry? What was that? Oh, Gustavros? Oh. What? Oh, I cannot believe this happened. What? 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 I am dropped from the Abgolemino soup. It is all over the kitchen floor. Oh, oh, that's okay. Don't worry about that. Are you all right? No! I have to squeeze all those lemons again. <sighs> Damn. This big meeting is on dry land. What's that? Well, I don't like the water. I can't swim. Not at all? Not a stroke. I can't seem to get my arms coordinated, you know? And I hate putting my face in the water. I'm gonna get this tight feeling. I start feeling, you know. Who are you looking for? The others. You know, Mallet, I can be a big help to you on this case. Yeah. No, I mean it. Just because you had to rescue me before does not mean I cannot handle this. I, I was raised in a tough neighborhood. I know how to take care of myself. Look, we don't need any mavericks on this case, all right? No, I'm willing to work with everybody. I don't want to just stand on the sidelines. I want to help you put this Chris Davis behind bars. Right. Who are these guys? We're doing this for your own good, Harley. Doing what? Just go quietly and everything will be fine. Bridget, want to thank your uncle? Thank you, Uncle Ed. Sure. Oh, thank you, Aunt Maureen. Well, look, I better get back to the hospital. What about you? You're supposed to be doing volunteer work. I'm on a break. Oh, well, come on. I'll give you right back. Oh, gosh. You know, I really feel like I should just kind of clean up some of this stuff. All right, don't be long. Okay. 
A little patience with wonders. <clears throat> Higher allowance. Great. Now, what am I going to do for money? Dear Elvis, I miss you so much. I hate it here. Come rescue me. It would be so much easier for you if you could just let it go. Never. But haven't you been through enough over this place? I haven't lost yet. I just... Hart, I hate to think of you getting hurt anymore. I'm not the one who's going to get hurt. The person who did this to me, they're the ones who are going to get hurt. for you. Casement down earlier shows how desperate he's getting. He's ready to crack. First we nail him, then we nail Roger. Well, now thanks to Mallet, we know who the weak link is. Davis. I say we call Ross. Mm -mm, no, it's too early. But we have proof of the bank accounts, the land deal. Mm, no, it's all circumstantial, Aunt Alex. Not to mention the fact that none of the evidence points to Roger yet. That's because Davis has done all of Roger's scuttlebunk. Just like Roger, not to get his hands dirty. You'd better get used to it. It'd be pounding rocks in prison if I have any say in it. Uh, let's not get overconfident. We haven't gotten Davis to talk yet. And according to my friend Trevor, Davis can be one tough customer. Very dangerous when cornered. Says so Roger. So then let's be doubly careful. We'll just keep our guard up so we're all agreed, right? We set a trap for Davis. Yes. And pray it snaps on Roger. I'm 6 News Assignment Editor John O'Connor. The former Deputy Police Chief of the City of Providence is arraigned on charges in the Peter Gilbert Affair. A story coming up tonight on 6 News at 6. Join us.